Here we are on Bolinas Ridge. It drops off almost 2,000 feet to the Pacific Ocean. I was born and raised right near here, just on the other side of this mountain. It's always these interfaces, these transition points that are so beautiful in the natural world. The way I start working on a print is I have thousands of sketches. I go out and sketch all the time. I go hiking. A lot of the sketches I do are from the places I go backpacking. To build the layers of a landscape print, you need to figure out how to break the distance up into these different planes and then build the layers up. And that's what the lines of my sketches do. They show the different layers as I see them so that I can build that up. I put in notes about color, about background, because you can't put in all the levels of detail that eventually will be in the print. Now this is a topo map of the Marble Mountains up in the wilds of Northern California. I was up right around here gathering firewood one day and I came across this view of Mount Shasta through a little ravine and it was just awesome the way the mountains stuck up there. So I did the sketch on the back of a topo map. All my life I'd spent a lot of time with the prints of Hokusai and particularly his 36 views of Mount Fuji. That was one of my great inspirations since I was a child for doing woodcut prints of landscape. And this view had the elements of several of my favorite of Hokusai's prints in it. One was this print of his of pilgrims measuring sort of the Japanese equivalent of the giant sequoia. This is a faded old print of it I had up on my wall at the time. And then the other is that wonderful red Fuji, which is one of Hokusai's two or three most famous prints. And this is the print I finally made from it. I've started to get to the point where I'm almost painting with the wood, but it's not immediate. It's a very delayed gratification sort of painting. There's always this surprise that comes because everything is carved. There's so much work before you actually get the color onto the page that you really don't know what it's going to turn out like. That is the great joy of printmaking. It kind of takes part of the construction of the image out of your hands and puts it out into this magical space. This California landscape, it's really a landscape that appeals to someone who has what my good friend diagnosed as topophilia. <laughs> he figured out my disease <laughs> and he gave it a name. And uh, I think I have it, which is uh, sort of a love of the landscape. Well, the way I got started making Japanese-style woodcut prints that looked something like hokusai was when I was a child, I grew up on the slopes of Mount Tamalpais. One side is the San Francisco Bay, the other side is the Pacific Ocean, and it's quite a place, this mountain. And I wanted to make pictures of it that were something like those wonderful pictures that Hokusai had done in his series 36 Views of Mount Fuji. I didn't realize that Hokusai hadn't done the block carving himself. It was a whole group of craftsmen that produced those incredible prints from the 1820s and 1830s, the ukiyo-e style woodblock prints. But I did know that it was about a series, about a place. And the first place I wanted to do a series, of course, was this mountain. And I started in on it when I was still in high school. And by the time I had finished college, I had enough of them to make a book, which I called 28 Views of Mount Tamalpais. I, I hadn't quite gotten to 36. I wanted to get to 36. I didn't get there. I never studied art. I just learned how to print on a printing press at UC Santa Cruz so I could make this book. Some of the prints in this book went way back to my teenage years. This is one of the early prints that I did that I thought really worked, Mount Tamalpais in the background. And I did want to put in color, but I didn't know how to use color yet, so I would hand roll it. So the only color ones in this book were ones where I could divide the scene into two pretty obvious colors. So here we've got the fields are all yellow and the mountain and the sky are blue. And just a few years later, around the time I was finishing this book in 1975, I've become much more refined in my ability to carve. All of this carving was done with a single Japanese V-gouge, which I was laboriously learning how to sharpen 
at the time. Sharpening is one of the most important parts of this. So this book I finished in 1975, and I don't think I would ever have made this book and probably never have become a printmaker if I hadn't been hit by a car turning left without signaling on my bicycle as I was coming down a steep hill one day and uh, had to spend uh, four months in a full leg cast. And, and therefore, I couldn't go out uh, surfing and bike riding and playing with my friends. And uh, I was forced to, to do something productive. And this is what I ended up doing, was this book. And the first step in making a print out of this sketch from up on Bolinas Ridge is to transition this sketch onto what becomes the key block and that's the basis for creating a multicolored print. So I take a piece of tracing paper and I go over the back of all the lines of the sketch on the tracing paper in a very soft pencil. And I turn it upside down on a uncut block. So before this block was cut, it was just a big flat surface. And I went over the back with a ballpoint pen and then I go to the carving. Once I get the key block carved, it has all the information from the sketch on it. It works like the template for the print. I take the key block and print it onto mylar sheets. And I turn it over and I rub it and I get the whole image transferred onto as many blocks as I'm going to need for the different colors of the print. Then the key block becomes the very last darkest color and it's this black that really gives the image a lot of power. I really use some of that possibility of the dark blacks and that strong coloration to give the print a lot of power and to give it a little more oomph, I would say. So now I am going to try to uh, get this block registered so that it's going to hit the right place along with all the other colors uh, on the print. And the way that I do that, I have made a whole stack of registration proofs. I run these through the press and then I move the block a little bit if I need to and it's a process of trial and error till I get it to hit exactly in the right place. And I'm going to put some ink onto the plate. Nicely. Let's see what happens. Oh, way off. Now this is a good example of, see how far off that is? That distance is how much I need to move the block over in the bed of the press. I got into making money at art when I was really young. I was very fortunate to grow up in a town that appreciated art, and I always had around me the inspiration of people that did art, and some of them sold it. When I was a teenager, I would take some of my pen and ink drawings down to the little outdoor art fair a couple blocks from my house in Mill Valley, and I would sell them to people for $10, $25. I always got as many people as possible that were interested in my work to give me their mailing addresses. And I have assiduously cultivated a mailing list that has grown and grown and grown. And anybody that's interested in trying to make a living at art, I suggest that they don't rely on galleries to take care of all that. OK, this was it before we had the second layer of green on. And here it is with the second layer of green. Now, the final layer of clac. Here it comes. Oh, look at that. That looks good. Voila, that's it. <laughs>